Jane's at the door. Beth, that yarn needs to be coming to you today, January the 30th. And I think we are in 1 Samuel. Oh, let me see if I can bring it up on the screen here. 1 Samuel. Okay, straighten up now. Don't mess me up. Here we go. 1 Samuel, verse 15. 1 Samuel 3, verse 15. So Samuel lay down until morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And Samuel answered, Here I am. And he said, What is the word that the Lord spoke to you? Please do not hide it from me. God do so to you and more also. If you hide something from me of all the things that he had said to you. Then Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. So we are talking about the dilemma of obedience. I know we are like way up. Uh, here we go. The dilemma of obedience. Mm -mm -mm. Does anybody have... Uh, a dilemma of obedience. Let's just, let's just think about this. Mm. God never speaks to us in dramatic ways, but in ways that are easy to misunderstand. Oh my goodness. Huh, did you get that? He, he speaks to us in ways that are easy to misunderstand. And then we say to ourselves, mm, I wonder if that is God's voice. Now, if you listen to last night's um, devotion, where I shared about the voice of God warning me when I was driving. Um, I could have said, oh, I wonder whose voice was that, and girls quit playing around in the back seat, or, but that wasn't an option. Um, there was nothing going on in the back seat. It was before the time of iPods, um, Nintendo's game play uh, iPad. It was before that time. <laughs> so there was no voice coming from the back of my car. That was a man's voice because there was three girls in the car. Me and my two little biddies. <sighs> Last night as we were reading from Isaiah 8-11 Isaiah said that the Lord spoke to him with a strong hand. That is, by the pressure of his circumstances. Wow, I had a circumstance and God had to tell me. Mm. Without the sovereign hand of God himself, nothing touches our lives. Do we discern his hand at work, or do we see things as mer, um, just a co winky dink, or that was just a mere occurrence? That, that, that wasn't. That uh, you're trying to to try to convince yourself that wasn't of the voice of God. Come on now. We have to get into the habit of saying. Speak, Lord, and life will become a romance. Oh, my goodness. When we say speak, Lord, let's go back. I'm going to go back here to um, 1 Samuel 3, verse 9. Let's get to it. 
Samuel, 1 Samuel 3, verse 9. Let me see. Let's pull that out. 1 Samuel 3, verse 9. Thank you guys for coming along with me. I hope that... I'm hoping that you are getting a blessing from these devotionals. I know that it's hard to see that. I have to use a magnifying glass, so what I'm doing is magnifying it. <laughs> I am magnifying it on my device and reading it. Then, verse 9. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say. Let's go up to verse 8. I'm just going to give you guys a little back verse. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, so he arose and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Wow, just a little backstory on Samuel. He was a young little lad, a little boy, who was living in the temple. His parents um, gave Samuel to the Lord, okay? They gave their son, Samuel, to the Lord, Eli, uh, Samuel's parents. They were, um, begging for a child, and the Lord heard the cry of his mama, Hannah. She was praying and begging for a child. Oh, look at that. Look at that beautiful Christmas ornament I found from my last child right there. My gift. Autumn, December 14, 2008. <laughs> Sixth grade. Eleven years old. Wow, now that's... <laughs> I'm talking of a child. Yes. Mm. Speaking of a child, <laughs> okay then, so Samuel was a gift from God to Hannah and her husband, yes, and she begged God for a child. And that sweet, sweet Hannah, when she conceived, after he was weaned, he was taken to the temple to serve. And yes, he was asleep and he heard the voice of God calling him and he thought it was Eli. Yeah, he thought it was Eli, and he went to Eli several times, saying yes. But Eli, after a few times, realized that it was the Lord speaking to Samuel. And Samuel needed to say, yes, Lord. He needed to say, your servant is listening. Speak. Speak, Lord. Wow. Every time circumstances press in on you, say, speak, Lord. Speak. 
and make time to listen. It doesn't do any good if he's talking if you're too busy uh, checking your text messages or um, doing something else. I mean, seriously. Chastening is more than a means of discipline. Chastening is meant to bring me to the point of saying, Speak, speak, Lord, speak. Think back to a time when God spoke to you. I, I remember that time. That his audible voice was in my vehicle. I remember it so plain. But he can speak to us in other ways. Yes, he does. My, my, my. Do you remember what he said? Was it like Luke 13? Or was it like 1 Thessalonians 5.23? Luke 11, verse 13. Let's go, let's go, let's go find it. Let's look in Luke 11. Come on. Luke eleven thirteen. Let's get to it. We're getting closer. Luke eleven verse thirteen. Uh huh. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Wow. Let me see where we are. Keep asking, seeking, and knocking. Oh my goodness. Luke, chapter 11, verse 13. Yes. Or 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm taking you guys right along with me. I know, I know. I know, sometimes people get everything together before they start a Bible study. But I really like to bring you with me. 1 Thessalonians 23. Now, <laughs> there it is, guys. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Mm, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, he who calls you is faithful who also will do it. He will do it. He is faithful. Mm, good Lord Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness tonight. We thank you for your goodness. Oh. As we listen, as we learn to listen, our ears become more sensitive and like Jesus. We will hear God all the time. Now, should you tell your Eli what God has shown to you? We're talking about the dilemma of obedience. This is where the dilemma of obedience comes in. This is where it hits us like a brick. We disobey God by becoming amateur providences and thinking. Oh, I must shield my Eli. 
who represent the best people we know. I must shield and protect and not say anything about what God has said. God did not tell Samuel to tell Eli. He had to decide that for himself. And it's true that God's message to you may hurt your Eli. Eli represents the best people that we know. Uh, our Eli represents the important people in our lives. It may hurt your Eli, but trying to prevent suffering in another's life will prove to be an obstruction between your soul and God. Wow. It is at your own risk that you prevent someone's right hand from being cut off and the right eye being plucked out. Oh, my wonderful, wonderful Lord, help us. If your right hand offend you cut it off and if your right eye offends you ah uh, it needs to be plucked out people are we finding ourselves at the point of disobedience just to spare someone else never 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 i'm just saying it again never ask another person's advice about anything god makes you decide before him we had this conversation a few weeks ago if you ask advice oh you always you most also almost always will side with satan hmm Galatians 1.16 says, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. In other words, I did not take what God told me and immediately run off and find somebody to tell them about it. I did not. Because I need to delve into his word and pray about it. Get into your spiritual prayer closet. Get into your space of just you and God and have that communion with him. Don't confer with flesh and blood. Don't take it to a mentor. I'm just saying. Don't take it to someone else that will probably chew it up and spit it out. Just saying. We have to keep some things to ourselves. And continue to say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. There comes that dilemma of obedience. You may be in a place of, but everything is just right, right here where I'm at right now, God. Are you sure you want me to uproot and go somewhere else? Everything is so ah, convenient right now and perfect and so ah, comfortable. Mm, sometimes we get comfortable. Somewhat. Um, so that comes somewhat as a dilemma and obedience we don't want to uproot we don't want to move we don't want to um, have to change change our address we don't want to deal with that change our address change our location 
change our wow yeah that's the dilemma of obedience mm. but God we have to listen to his voice above all else we must hear his voice we must decide that our obedience is better than sacrifice our obedience indeed is better than sacrifice wow I love you guys I know that um, you haven't seen my face in a while but I think you saw it yesterday. It was a little rough. But we must trust in the Lord with all of our heart. We must trust and not lean on our own understanding, but listen to Him when He speaks. Amen, amen. Jesus, Jesus, help us, God, to be obedient. Help us, Father God. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to come into your presence. To be able to say, yes, Lord, speak, I'm listening. Yes, Lord, I'm ready. Have your way in my life. Call me, I, your servant, I'm listening and I'm ready. Jesus, give us, give us strength to trust and believe and ask for your mercy. Ask for your wisdom. Give us, Lord, give us, Lord, a desire to serve you even more. In this day and time, touch each one, Lord, that's under the sound of my voice. Heal the ones that are sick. Encourage the discouraged, Father God. Move in every need. Thank you that you are the comfort that we need, that you're the strength, that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and that without you, Father, we are nothing. Thank you. Thank you that we have the opportunity to open your word and study it together. Help us, Lord, to let you speak and give us, give us, Father God, patience and the eager ear to listen. In your precious name, I ask these things. Amen.